And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiated. Seven. Six. Five. Four stage engine start. Three. Two. One. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. It's been about a week, um, but recently, a few days ago, the Artemis 1 mission launched from uh, Kennedy Space Center on the 16th of November, I believe. And this was a really exciting mission because it was the first launch of the Space Launch System, or SLS, that NASA has been building for around two decades by now. Yeah. So I decided I would recreate it in Kerbal Space Program. Because why not? In a world where everybody is making like Starship and Vulcan recreations, I thought, let's see, let's just recreate the NASA mission. Because, you know, NASA, it's a safe, safe thing and it's an easy thing to recreate because safety is the best for NASA. And of course, safety is the best for NASA or else they're gonna lose funding. So it's easier for me to recreate stuff that seems actually sensibly safe. So you can see me constructing the ICPS here. Now, I think I should explain the block system of SLS, but David Willis already did a great video on that, which I will link in the description. And if I did the editing right, there should be a card on screen right now to your right. And there are all these struts that connect the ICPS and its other fuel tank. Um, it took a while to get that in a shape that I liked. And that skipper, incredibly overpowered for what we need. We're just gonna lower the TWR so that it's sensible and humans can ride it. And the SLS Block 1 is actually the smallest of all the block types of the SLS. It only has four RS-25Ds and two five-segment solid rocket boosters, while the Block 1B well, technically, it would still have the RS-25D main engines, but it would have an upgraded version called the RS-25E around Artemis 5 or 6. And now you can see me creating the fairing that keeps the Orion spacecraft. Now, the Orion was actually, it was actually made a long time ago before SLS was even envisioned. It was part of the Constellation program, which was a program meant to send humans to the moon in 2020 and Mars. Obviously that never happened because the Obama administration canceled it. Ah, I really wish that actually existed because it would be something very, very cool to see. It had two rockets, the Ares 1 and the Ares 5. The Ares 5 is basically a uh, SLS, just a bit fatter, I believe. I mean, it looks fatter, so it must be fatter. And so, Constellation program, it was going over budget, it was, it was very slow, so the Obama administration just cancelled it in favor of more private spacecraft like SpaceX's Dragon and uh, Boeing Starliner to see what commercial companies could do in the space era. Now you can see me adding these solid rocket boosters right here. These are actually four segments long because these are made for space shuttle replicas, but eh, close enough for Kerbal scale. And actually, Snoopy is going to fly on this mission. Yes, in that Artemis 1 Orion spacecraft is the is a Snoopy stuffed animal from the popular Peanuts cartoon. And I really like that cartoon. So we're going to create a Kerbal named Snoopy Kerman because everything has to be Kerbalized. And here we are creating Snoopy. Now, there was this weird bug that happened when I switched back into build mode after creating Kerbal and back that would happen. And I couldn't go back to build mode or whatever, so I just decided to launch it and then revert so that I could get the UI back to normal. We're gonna add a bit more fuel so that it's better scale. Now, in reality, SLS would be the five meter diameter parts to be scaled right, but I wanted to get the colors right as well, and you can't color those five meter diameter fuel tanks orange. Here we are launching. We're gonna light up all these engines and Wow, amazing camera tool shot right there. I literally only know how to do like two, like this one 
and then a Doppler shot that's going to come up soon. Um, I'm not a master with camera tools, basically. And we're going to start pitching downrange so that we can get into orbit of the Earth. Now, this thing has a ludicrous amount of delta V. I ended up, you'll see what I mean once we finish our lunar injection burn. Now, I still, when I went to the moon, I, I remembered something. You also have to stick around to figure that out. Gotta get that viewer retention up if my YouTube analytics have anything to go by. And it's a little shaky, but it's fine. And we've blasted through the atmosphere way too fast. We're gonna, I think we're gonna have to waste a bit of fuel making sure that the apple acids doesn't get too high. So the core stage basically gets the entire SLS into orbit. So that's why the SLS core stage is so massive. And the ICPS, even the SLS Block 1B with its much better upgraded EUS or the exploration upper stage doesn't change the LEO capacity because the core stage basically just puts it into an orbit. And in this case, it's no different. Now, they could have put the SLS core stage actually in an orbit, but um, they don't to keep space junk wary, but you know, we, we'll, we'll recover that soon, don't worry, we, we'll have a rescue mission coming up for those uh, debris, and by that I mean literally terminating them in the tracking station, and we're just gonna, don't mind that giant U-curve, that's just a transfer stage I used to get to Duna, when I was just having fun with the Ranger version 0.2, yes! I am plugging in my 100th subscriber special video right here. Go watch it, it has a space shuttle. Um, a lot of people actually seem to like it, like everyone, almost, like a lot of people subscribed, and thank you so much, guys. And here we are getting our lunar encounter. Now, I wanted to put it in a near rectilinear halo orbit, but couldn't find the right ratio between prograde and normal, so that's what I had to do. Just went in an equatorial orbit, we're, we're not scared of a little communications blackout. And we're gonna finish the burn. We're gonna start the burn soon. But I gotta get this encounter really precise. I don't really care how much Delta V we spend, but to be realistic, I want it to be as little as possible. And 700 meters per second, pretty good. So we're just gonna wait for that thing to come. I don't know why I didn't just time warp there think I'm going to start time warping soon. But anyway, we're going to focus our view on Kerbin so that we can see when the maneuver node is. And oh no, I accidentally over time warped. This is going to happen again in this video. I don't know why. I just, I'm just very overzealous with the time warp button. I think it's because I have better time warp and it just time warps much faster. I really should remember to turn that mod off when I'm doing precise time warping for maneuvers. So it's fine. You can actually get a MUN encounter without a maneuver node by just making sure that the MUN is in the horizon. We're just going to decouple the ICPS while we're on a collision course to the MUN so that it just crashes there. But we're we're not going to crash there, so we're going to use the uh, service module to put us in back into a good encounter. Now, problem is that in real life, I mean, if the service module was this powerful, then we wouldn't need an SLS to get into an orbit. Probably a Falcon Heavy, or maybe even in just a normal Atlas V could get this thing into orbit. But that surface module is incredibly heavy and so underpowered for what it is. Isa, what are you doing? What kind of thing is, what kind of results are you giving us Americans? Anyway, we're time warping onto the MUN and oh no, I see time warp flashbacks coming up. I made sure I was not going to time warp too fast. Um, oh. What's this? I time warp way too much. So I was shocked. I thought I was going to have to restart the mission, but then another MUN encounter. Yes, we have a second MUN encounter that's coming up. And the more U-shaped an encounter is, I think it's a bit more efficient. So we're not wasting too much fuel, I guess. And here we are coming into a new MUN encounter. I made sure. I made sure that we weren't going to smash the time warp right past it. And here we are into an orbit. And as I went to the map view for the orbit, I remembered Jebediah, Bill, and Bob still stuck on that sea-launched rocket lander. Um, I'll put a card on screen to that video if you want to watch the drama that happened in that video. 
Matt Lounge still hasn't replied if he was actually gonna rescue me with Blunderbirds. He made a new Blunderbirds video today, so I don't know. Maybe I have to get a sub KSP subreddit account to make sure he notices. Maybe YouTube comments aren't enough. Speaking of which, we're just gonna spend a bit more time in Mun orbit and just saying hi to Bill, Bob, and Jebediah. We're tragically still stuck. I think I might have to rescue them myself. I can't just rely on Matt Lown to rescue them. And oh no, is this Lodi? I hate when this happens. Sometimes it crashes my game. Sometimes it literally just reverts the flight to an earlier point in the mission. There's a bug and this version actually isn't the latest version of KSP. This is KSP 1.12.3. Uh, the newest version is 1.12.4 and that doesn't work on Mac for some reason. It's the new private division launcher that's causing problems. Why? Oh, why oh why squad? Why? That private division launcher, I hate it. That's why I, I decided to just downgrade my save file back to 1.12.3 because it just wasn't loading on 1.12.4. I hope the bug is fixed by now. Um, I'm actually gonna, after this recording, I'm gonna go try it out and see how it goes. I'll make a community post about it to tell you if it works or not. And I made sure not to time warp too fast so that we die when we re-enter. Um, I think we actually chose way too steep of a re-entry profile. We're coming in so fast that Snoopy passed out and we were so close to the ground, like only eight kilometers. So was, come on, regain consciousness, Snoopy, come on, come on. And we regain consciousness, and I immediately deployed the parachutes. We cannot risk um, smashing into the ground too hard in the ocean at the end of this mission. I'm pretty sure Artemis 1 is going to splash down in the Atlantic or the Pacific, not the Gulf of Mexico, um, for sure. But we're going to splash down and float serenely down to the ground where Snoopy should be safe and we should be able to recover him. And... If you guys have enjoyed this video, then I would really appreciate a like, a subscribe, and ringing on the bell. Random tangent here, how did that debris survive that speed of re-entry? Anyway, so yeah, I would really appreciate a like, comment, subscribe, and a bell. Really helps me out, create more content. Now that school's out for Thanksgiving break, uh, I can create way more content. So expect a lot more videos. I'm making... I'm planning on Minimus, Minimus Base Camp Part 2, where we're going to send a surface base there. And, you know, I have a, already have a design in my head. And I remembered to change better time warp back to its original state so that I don't over time warp. Like, if you guys watch my short called Why Did This Happen, you probably know why I'm so careful with time warping with parachutes. And thanks everyone for watching. This is Andrew the Astronaut, signing off.